All right, guys, it is Saturday, December 31st, 2022. So this is pretty much the last day of the year. So uh, I have changed out the leaf spring on the car. Uh, it is a little higher on this side, just a little bit. I haven't measured it, but when I stand back and look at it, it is up a little higher. However, leaf springs settle anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch over time. And I don't think anybody knows exactly how long it actually takes, but uh, so I've got that changed out. I've got the shock bolted back on. I did take the shock off just for to have it out of the way, basically. But uh, right now I'm getting ready to work on changing out the sending unit. So I have a, a new sending unit here. This is one I have never tried before. This one's from Speedway, and this one was right at $100. And the ones I usually get are half of that from H&H &H Classic Chevy. However, I have had two faulty ones, uh, the cheaper ones, be faulty. Uh, and this one happens to be one of them. It is leaking and it appears to be after I filled the gas tank up to the top is when I had the leak Looking at it with a flashlight. It looks like it's coming out around the tube where it goes into this round plate um, I mean it could be It could be that rubber just cracked on that sending unit. I mean who knows but uh, Anyway, I got a new sending unit and I'm gonna change it out now. I can tell you the ones from Speedway has a plastic, you know, strainer on it and a plastic float. Uh, the ones from H&H &H is kind of a stock style strainer with a, a brass float. So anyway, hopefully this works out. Now I do have a copper gasket. This is, there's two major important parts when you're putting a sending unit in a Tri-5 Chevy. You need a cork gasket and install it dry. Don't put any kind of silicone on that. So the other thing that keeps them from leaking is the proper screws with copper washers on them. The copper washers seal that and it basically keeps that gas from being coming up the threads uh, out, out here. You know what I mean? So the copper sealing washer seals it around that. So you need the copper sealing washer screws. Now the factory screws are clutch head. So they take a clutch head screw. Um, you could possibly use the screws that come in the sending unit kit and then just go to your hardware store and get some copper sealing washers. You can get copper washers, aluminum washers, like my local Ace Hardware has a lot of stuff uh, in those bins. Just find a good washer, you know, it's that'll fit that. But uh, I ordered the reproduction screws and uh, of course they're in the tank already, but I am gonna be reusing them. But I do have a clutch head uh, screwdriver. So, uh, if you don't have a clutch head screwdriver set, you can get a set from Amazon pretty inexpensive. But uh, if you're going to tear apart a 55 Chevy, you're going to need a few different sizes because uh, these cars are put together with clutch head screws and a lot of the dash parts and a few other things you'll find. Uh, but anyway, that is most important is a, a cork gasket and the copper sealing washers on the screws when you put it in. When you buy a sending unit or a gas tank, it'll come with a rubber gasket and it'll come with just regular old hardware store screws and they always leak. I've had guys tell me, well, mine didn't leak. Well, give it time, it will, I promise you. So if you're gonna be uh, putting a car inside a garage or a shop and you're running a heater with an open flame like I am, I'm not taking the chance. So uh, this is always sealed for me, but uh, I, I can tell you the only place I can find a cork gasket like all the other manufacturers are just going to be rubber uh, The only place I can find this is H&H &H classic Chevy. They're not a sponsor But they they have them in stock now when you look at it online at H&H &H, at their picture It looks like a black rubber gasket, but it does say cork in the description Now this one I ordered years ago like several years ago, so I don't know You know it still says that it's cork on their their website, but you might call and ask them just to make sure, but that is the only place I've ever found out uh, that they've had cork. And the number is 292, 292. That's all the information you need to know right there. H&H &H Classic Chevy in Arkansas. I think it's Bentonville if I remember right. Or Gravit or something, I don't remember, but I'm gonna get to it. All right guys, here is the test that you do on your Tri-5 Chevy fuel sending unit to see if your gauge is bad or your sending unit is bad. So the first thing you're going to do is undo the nut on the sending unit connection and pull the wire off the sending unit 
and just let it hang in the air. Don't let it touch anything. And then at that point, which I have that that way, but what I did was I wired, I just kind of wrapped a, a little piece of wire on the terminal. I have it off of the sending unit because the sending unit's right there, obviously. But anyway, I, I wrapped that end on the connector and then I've got this laying here that I'm going to touch to the bumper to get a ground. So the first thing you want to see is if you turn the key on, it should go past full. So watch right here. All right, it pegs over to the full mark. So that's showing me so far that that's good. Now I'm going to do my best at trying to set this up here. And when I touch that ground, I don't know if I have anything to hook, set this on. I may not actually. I guess I should have thought about this before I climbed up in there, huh? Let's try setting a box up in here. All right, so now we're going to watch. I've got the key on, and it's past full. So now I'm going to hit that wire and touch it to the bumper to ground it out. It should go past E. Okay, so that tells you your gauge in the dash is good, your original gauge. Which pretty much means faulty sender. Now, it could be a ground issue because... You know, you've got everything redone on the car. You've got the bottom of the car undercoated or, you know, bedlined. And then, you know, it could be a problem with the ground. But what I did before was I put a ground, just a jumper ground on the sending unit itself. Like on the tube, I just put the alligator clip on the tube. And then I run it out here and, and hooked it onto the bumper. And it didn't make the gauge read any different. So that sending unit is faulty, which I knew it was anyway. All right, here's the sending unit differences right here. So this one actually has a, a ground strap type of thing, whereas this is just a wire. Uh, this has an original style sock on it, or strainer. Old school people like myself call them socks. And uh, it has a brass float on it. Anyway, other than that, it looks Pretty much the same, I guess. One's an awful lot shorter. Look at that. Wow. How is that going to work? I guess it don't matter much, but that's a that's a pretty huge difference in design there, the way those are done. In my opinion, this uh, the one that was in the car is way better quality because it comes with a brass float and all that stuff um, and a strap instead of a you know piece of wire. But it's funny, this one is double the price. Imagine that. So now I'm even worried about it reading the correct fuel level. Another thing about it, this has a steel nut on it. This one has a brass. Huh. Oh well, this is the other important component right here. See that little copper ceiling washer on there? You have to have that. It'll leak around the screws if you don't. I can tell you if you just want to buy that one screwdriver. 3 16 clutch drive. I got the right one. Yeah, that's it. So that's the clutch head screw you need right there. All right, I'm going to show you another thing on these. This could uh, potentially tear somebody's gasket up or mess it up and make it leak. So these gaskets, uh, you have to spin it around on there until you find it. Like this one does not line up. You can see that one right there uh, closest to my finger. You can't even see the hole. So when you rotate it, now they all line up. 
So don't just stick it on there and start running a screw through it. They go on on one way. So keep that in mind. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that red Sharpie and I'm gonna put a little mark right here on the corner edge so I can see it under the car and then on the outside edge of that gasket. And that way when I'm up under there trying to get it on there, I can get it clocked where it needs to go. All right, so I got the meter set on ohms here, and I've got the the one end of the of the meter just sitting on the tube right there. You just need to basically ground. And then I'm going to take and go to the positive post here. So the sending unit is all the way down as if it's an empty tank, and it's my numbers are kind of crazy, but. If I start doing this, the number's increasing, which tells me that it's kind of working. <laughs> That's weird how that thing's just jumping all around like that. So you have a 30 ohm sending unit, and uh, I mean, that's like 39, 37, 38, 40. It's kind of all over the place, but if I move it back down here, like it's going to have a... So it's like 18, 20 kind of ish where I'm holding it, and then if I drop it, it goes back down to kind of, kind of zero. So what I'm going to do is go get just two gallons of fuel in a gas jug because the tank's completely empty. I drained it out the drain plug and I'm going to put two gallons of gas in it and then whatever that gas gauge reads, that's pretty much when I'm going to know when the gas gauge gets down there that I got two gallons left. So that'll kind of give me an idea of, you know, how accurate it is. But I mean, it's kind of all over the place. You know what I mean? I guess we can try to test the other one. This is the one out of the car. Now, when I was talking about a ground and putting a jumper ground, like if you're, you know, you undercoated your car, bedlined it and whatever, and your, your body's not going to get a ground, basically your gas tank is a ground, like it's grounded out, basically. So if your gas tank can't get a ground to the body, like a good metal-on-metal -metal contact, you'll have to put a jumper ground on it. So, i lay the ground one up there, put this on here. It ain't doing nothing. This sending unit is completely dumped. Brand new sending unit. And I should have tested it before I put it in, but I was like, oh, it'll be fine. Not so much. Well, now that it's all put back together and two gallons of fuel in it, the gas gauge doesn't move off past E. How wonderful. I swear, man, I cannot catch a break. So I bench tested the sending unit. I bench tested the gas gauge, and I know those work. So that tells me that that shorter arm on that new sending unit, it was a lot shorter than the one I took out of here. I'm assuming that that arm with the float on it is not bent correctly to read correctly. So at this point, I'm going to have to pull the sending unit back out of the tank again and hook everything up and see, I guess, how, <laughs> see if that's what the deal is. I need to move up on that lever a little bit more, or the arm with the float on, I need to move it up a little bit more to see if that comes off E. Ugh. So frustrating, man. Just can't catch a break. Thanks for watching.